Hi everyone, um, just doing another update in regards to both the fundraising campaign and talking a little bit more about anxiety and depression. After that last video I wanted to talk more on that um, in a little bit deeper terms. Um, again, my personal experience and talking about it from a more sort of detached um, scientific point of view, I guess, or medical point of view. Yeah, we'll go with medical point of view. Um, as I previously said, you know, I normally like to film outdoors um, in nature, but I'm down with a cold, um, so we're filming indoors today. <laughs> Yeah, so this video will be a mix of the New Zealand expedition and then I'm going to talk a little bit about the combination of anxiety and depression and the effects that it has on the different natural body systems and um, things like that. So, getting into it, you've probably noticed if you know me and you follow me on social medias that I've put the Crooks Climbing Craft page YouTube channel, all of that on hold. Um, really I've put a lot of things on hold at the moment. I am hoping to get some new videos up soon, maybe some gear testing, um, bushcraft type stuff, um, hiking related content. Um, we'll just see how we go with that. Um, yeah, I've really put a lot of stuff aside and on hold at the moment with just trying to focus on both personal and professional development um, when it comes to where I'm at when, with climbing guiding and just outdoor guiding in general and um, my climbing um, and where those things are at and just trying to upskill and um, yeah gain knowledge experience and push myself a bit when it comes to those things so it means that a lot of the other things that I'm normally doing are being put aside. Um, the New Zealand trip also being, of course, a massive part of all of everything that I'm doing at the moment. Um, large focus is going towards that, as well as a few other um, job-related or personal-related things. So in regards to the New Zealand expedition, currently we have basically all the gear we need, all the equipment. Um, so right now the focus for me is um, getting the money and raising the money, saving the money to be able to chip in for my third of, you know, pay for my flights, my third of the costs towards um, transportation, accommodation, um, any other little fees and bits attached to that, um, renting avalanche safety gear, um, cause I'm probably not going to just outright buy that because it's very expensive. Um, yeah, so just trying to pull all that together so that we can set dates and really start to pay for those bigger things like flights, um, car rental, uh, bits and pieces like that so we can really put things it together now that we've got a plan for our solid plan what we're going to pull, call plan A now that we've got that really solid in place um, now it's really locking in dates and starting to look at what we can afford to pay for right now and moving forward and yeah start to pay for some of those um, bigger costs and important things. Yeah, still still a fair lot of things to be done um, to lock all that in and for me to pay my way of it all um, and then of course come up with a solid plan B and plan C as backup plans just in case something happens in New Zealand whether it's weather or you know whatever that might be uh, you know, a few options of those is hang around, if the weather's good in Arthur's, hang around Arthur's Pass and do some different peaks that we um, aren't thinking of at the moment out of there. Um, another one would be potentially doing the Copeland track um, in and out. Um, yeah, I'm going to be looking at some plans B and C um, probably hopefully this next week 
and um, put them together so that we've got some backup plans for the expedition um, just in case. So that's the expedition part. That's where we're at at the moment. Um, that's me still trying to raise some raise money so I can pay for my third in those group costs and flights. Um, yeah. So again, if you have donated, shared, and commented anything, a massive, massive, massive thank you. Um, if you're watching this, please share if you can. Donate. Um, you know even the smallest bit is going to go a huge, huge way for me at the moment. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah, share, comment, donate if you can. All of that would be really, really appreciated. Um, I am trying to kind of not overload people with updates about all this, uh, but keep things moving, keep things going, and just trying to keep this kind of alive, I guess. Um, which I find difficult because I'm not good at advertising, at marketing, at, you know, trying to get people to give me money. For me, it's um, a very counterintuitive um, practice to be asking for help and to be asking for money. Um, yeah, so that's hard. And that brings me into the anxiety and depression pretty well, actually. <laughs> so I wanted to talk about the mix of anxiety and depression. I'm not a doctor. Absolutely in no way am I medically qualified to talk about this stuff on a um, point of view of a doctor or a medical practitioner. So, you know, all of this is either coming from personal experience or research that I've read or being told by medical professionals, but of course I myself am not a medical professional. So my personal experience with anxiety is that I will experience anxiety up to the point of panic type, you know, high anxiety attacks, panic attacks, and that will continue on until my body literally can't take any more and it hits the chronic fatigue and then I drop down into depression, low mood, and all that fun stuff. So that's how it works for me. Anxiety, 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 chronic fatigue, drop down into depression. That's been my experience um, when I've experienced um, anxiety at a very high level that, yes, then drops into depression. And that kicks in and takes over and enforces the fatigue and the low mood and other things that I'm about to talk about. So, taking this a little bit out of just the personal experience, I wanted to talk about the roles that they play on some of the different natural body systems that we have going. So when it comes to the nervous system, it causes a complete overdrive of the nervous system that puts you into the fight flight response and that heightened anxiety panic kind of mode. Um, you know, it can cause kind of ticks and twitches. We, quite often my hands will be very shaky when I'm anxious. Let's see, they're actually not too bad today. Little bit of shake. Um, Brain chemicals, of course, it's doing all sorts of stuff in your brain when these things start to happen, increasing some chemicals, decreasing some other chemicals, um, and just causing um, maybe not imbalances, but different reactions depending on those chemicals that are either being upped or downed as you experience these things. Um, OCD type behavior in some people, I know for me that's been a strong part of my experience and that's that anxiety and the nervous system and things triggering that kind of response. Fatigue, uh, another nervous system response when you put into that overdrive and it just kicks to a point that your body can't take it anymore. There's just too much adrenaline pumping through your body um, and through your nervous system that you just go into fatigue mode. Um, Irritable. I like to think that I'm not a very angry or irritable, irritable person, but I know at some points if I'm very, very anxious and stressed, 
um, I can be irritable. And it most likely that's going to be towards the people that are closest to me. Not random people. Um, which is a little unfortunate if you're very close to me. And I'm sorry if I've snapped at you or anything like that. Um, ever. Um, yeah, that's an anxiety response when you just can't take any more stimulation or overload and you just kind of snap over just tiny things. Um, yeah, I think most people that know me know that I'm not an angry person and that I'm not very irritable, um, but I can just snap over little things for a second and then kind of reel myself back in if I'm just too overloaded. Um, sleep trouble is another thing that people experience and that I've definitely experienced with anxiety and depression whether it's sleeping too much or not sleeping enough um, okay now I'm going to talk gastrointestinal systems um, it really anxiety you know panic depression it can really mess up that entire system and cause you know nausea feeling unwell, um, vomiting, cramps, stomach pain, all of that really, really fun stuff that's great to experience. Um, and that, that for me, has always been a huge symptom um, of experiencing just, yeah, you know, nausea um, and at times vomiting um, due to that just adrenaline pumping, pumping, pumping. And then those symptoms start to feed off each other. And if you're feeling those symptoms and they make you a little bit anxious and you're already anxious and it just feeds off and just bounces up, 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 up until you hit a level of the anxiety and depression and then you just, you know, hit a point that you just can't take any more of and it's just a complete overload. So yeah, all those symptoms can feed off each other. And then we move into the immune system, which is another one I would want to talk about. So it causes muscle flare-ups, both anxiety and depression can cause this, which, you know, tightness in muscles, that lump in the throat that I believe I spoke about in the last video. Um, yeah, muscle ache, muscle pain, cramping in muscles. Um, lower immune system in general you know the muscle cramping and the muscle aches and things like that is the immune system trying to fight against something in the body that's not really there um, you know you're not sick with a bacteria or a virus or anything um, so there's nothing in your system that your body can fight against but your immune system still flaring up and trying to fight against something even though there's nothing there so it does cause just your entire immune system to flare up and to go into overdrive again. Um, so it can cause a lowered immune system, which means getting sick easier. Um, I like to say that I don't often get physically sick, um, but I'm down with the cold at the moment. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that lowered immune system. And that's a really kind of long-term thing as well. Like, the longer that you experience anxiety, stress, depression it's going to just consistently lower, you know, overdrive certain systems and just lower those systems as well over time. Um, then the other one I kind of wanted to talk about, cardiovascular, so it can cause increased heart rate where your heartbeat is really, really going super fast. Um, it can cause increased blood pressure, which then can lead to dizziness um, and things like that. Um, and then other stuff, kind of breath troubles, hyperventilating, shortness of breath, um, lightheadedness, again, that can be attached to the breathing or the cardiovascular type things, um, headaches, which again can be associated to, you know, the tight muscle from the immune system flare up or from the nervous system and um, your brain just going into overload and things like that. There's a various amount of things that can cause the headaches associated. Um, yeah, sleep troubles yet again. Um, loss of appetite. We just, food is, it's something you need, but it's not something you enjoy. I personally experience that on a deep level. I love tea, coffee, um, beverages. Um, but when it comes to food, I'm not a huge, huge food person. I 
enjoy cooking for others, but I don't really enjoy cooking for myself, and I don't normally have much of an appetite. Um, I'll normally eat maybe one biggish meal a day. So yeah, loss of appetite, big one for me, and quite a common thing that people experience. Loss of interest in um, hobbies and things that you'd normally do. Yep, another one that I've really experienced in the past and probably am experiencing a little bit right now. Um, that just that loss of interest, um, being less social, not going out as much, being a little, a little bit more closed off, uh, decreasing inhibitions, which kind of counteracts the being unsociable, but when you're really, really down, you just don't really give a, what's a safe word I can use for YouTube, um, you know what I mean, you just don't give a about anything. Um, and that sort of, you know, lowers your um, inhibitions and that decision making. Um, that luckily is not something I experience at all. Um, I definitely experience the being less social, but that um, um, lessons of, sorry, lessening of inhibitions is not something I've ever experienced, so I'm happy about that one. Um, and then, you know, just other things like um, relate, you know, really can affect your relationships, whether that's romantic, friends, family, whatever. Um, and can affect those things on multiple levels. Increasing things like sexual desire and um, sexual performance and things like that. Um, me and romance aren't really ever been on good terms. I only uh, I can't really talk much to that one to be honest. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about is meds. Um, now, I'm not against medication. I know that it can work amazing for some people and can be an absolute life changer. So I'm not talking down on medication or telling people that medication is bad in any way. If it works for you, that's awesome, that's great. If it's something you're thinking of trying, great, give it a go, see if it works for you. It could. My experiences with medications has not been good. I will be very blunt and honest about that. Um, yeah, they can work wonders. In my case, they did the opposite. Um, yeah. yeah. My experience with them is not positive at all, and looking into long-term research on antidepressants, anti-anxiety medication, and antipsychotic medic medications, um, they can, you know, long term, they can lead to some pretty major issues. Um, or basically, the longer that you're on those medications, the more susceptible that you may become to dementia and Alzheimer's later in life or early in life. Um, again, that's a little bit disputed between the medical and scientific communities, um, but from a lot of the research that I've read, there's some pretty strong pointers there that antidepressants, anti-anxiety and antipsychotics can lead to dementia and Alzheimer's either later in life or actually kicking in earlier than they normally would in people. Um, but then there's an argument of is it the medications or is it the mental illnesses that are causing these things? Because you know at this point in the world, in the Western world at least, um, a lot of people that are diagnosed with mental illnesses are on these medications. So it's, at the moment, it's a bit of a which one is causing what. So maybe a combination of A, B, or both together C cause those long-term physical ailments. Um, yeah, it's a little bit disputed, but from what I've read, there's some pretty strong evidence that medications can lead to an increased chance in dementia and Alzheimer's and other um, potentially really bad physical things um, and lead to psychological issues later on, um, you know, coming either staying on the medications or coming off them um, can essentially lead back to the initial um, issues that you were having be when you were put on the medication. Because the way that these medications work is that they actually um, 
when you take them, they essentially increase the chemicals in your body to the point that your body becomes used to having those medications in it, increasing those certain chemicals or working on those certain receptors in the brain. Well, more so that one. More so working on the receptors in the brain. Your body becomes used to that. So, if you either take it away or keep at the same dose, you're going to experience taking away, you're going to experience withdrawal effects, most likely, or keeping it at the same dosage, you're going to lose the positive effects that you were having from the medication, which then means that you need to continually up and up and up your dose as your body gets used to it to keep having the positive of the medication, um, which I think Personally, for me, that's a major flaw in how medications work. Um, and one of the reasons why I've had such a bad experience with medications is that <clears throat> either forming a... what do, They don't call it an addiction, they call it a dependence on the medication that either trying to come off it causes long-term um, withdrawal effects or staying on it means that you have to up your dose to then have the same positive effects that you were getting from them. Now I've tried a lot of different antidepressant medications that are used for depression anxiety. I've tried a lot of anti-anxiety medications and I've also been put on and tried antipsychotic medications which are used off-label to treat anxiety and depression because they can be um, sedating and help those things even though they were never designed to do that. It's just something that doctors um, and medical professionals have kind of figured out over the years that even though they were designed for things like bipolar or psychosis um, they can actually help anxiety and depression and um, so I've tried all three of those separate kinds well within those three there's multiple 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 kinds of medications but yeah as a broad label I've tried those three medications types and personally my my experiences have not been positive. They've either not worked for me or they've worked way too well. And again, these can be absolutely life-saving for certain people. In my case, very much not. In my case, almost the opposite, actually. Um, I think another thing that medication can lead towards, and this is not such a long-term thing, it's more when you're first put on it, it can actually increase the anxiety or increase the depression and increase um, suicidal thoughts, which is a bit of a scary one and something that doctors don't often talk about, um, which kind of is a little bit worrying to me at times, um, that when you go back and do the research, you'll get the pamphlets from the pharmacists and read through it. It has all this information that doctors don't really talk about um, when it comes to these um, types of medications. And then just the toxicity levels of these um, certain chemicals in the body. Um, again, this only applies to certain medications where they can form a toxicity, toxicity within the body. So not all mental health medications can cause this, but some can, where essentially there's just a so much level of you, in, of that medication in your body that it becomes toxic. Um, this can be experienced with a with a lot of different medications all over the spectrum of um, medications but mostly ones that are addictive or have abusive type um, potential um, can be very toxic to the body and can build up build up build up and form um, not an overdose but a toxicity within the body uh, which are two separate things and very very different from each other so yeah, that's a little bit just about, I guess, my experience with the anxiety and the depression, my experience and a little bit about my medication, and then um, just a little bit about how the anxiety and depression impact those certain bodily, natural bodily systems that we have going, and a little bit about the expedition just for the fun of it.
Alrighty, um, if you've watched this, thank you. I know this has been, again, a slightly longer video. Um, so thank you very much, and I will update. Uh, oh, um, I've reached um, elevation gain of about 5,000 meters at the moment on my mission to do the Triple Crown, so I'm really happy about that, really, really stoked on that. I'm um, going to keep, once I'm over this cold, going to keep pushing myself to get that elevation gain in. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. I will update and talk to you soon. Bye.